So now let's go back to our five senses and talk about being attentive because we miss so much information that's coming through our senses. Remember, two million bits of information coming in, but a lot of that is distorted and deleted. And to just give you a little demonstration of how much we might miss, I'd like to do a quick uh, little test on your uh, sensory awareness. So some of you may have seen this video, but for others you might find it quite amusing. This is a test of selective attention. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the basketball. How many passes did you count? The correct answer is 15 passes. But did you see the gorilla? So, did you see the gorilla? If not, rewind the tape a little bit and have another look and see what you missed. And you'll think to yourself, how on earth did I, I miss that? And it goes to show that if our focus of our attention is in one direction, we can be oblivious to stuff in another direction. So we will go a lot more into ways to empower our uh, sensory acuity and to be observant of even micro changes in people and things around us. And we teach that, but it's obviously uh, quite a lot to get through, so we're not going to go into that now. But I do want to talk about a way, a simple technique that you can use uh, that's quite easy to learn to enable you to look at things from different viewpoints which will give you far more information than you had before. And after all, it's about the amount of information that you can absorb about a different situation gives you a better position on which to make educated judgments about how to act in that situation. So let's now talk about the three perceptual positions which will allow you to get what we call a triple description of any event that you're in. So the three perceptual positions are first person, second person and third person. And by looking at any situation from these three vantage points, so to speak, we get a lot more information than obviously if we just looked at it from one point, which is what we normally do. So let's talk about these individually. So the first person point of view is looking at things through your own eyes, with your own judgments, with your view on the world, with how you think things should be. And is obviously familiar to most of us. It's looking at things with our own boundaries in place, that sort of thing. Whereas second person is trying to see it from the other person's point of view. So you heard the saying, step in their shoes and walk around for a while. It's trying to really empathize with how the other person feels, how the other person thinks about the situation from their background, with their history, with the way they look at the world, with their thoughts and feelings. It's trying to get as much information as you can as to why the other person is reacting the way they can, the way they are. And then finally, the third person or observer position is like the wise observer. So looking at things without emotion, without judgment, just sort of standing back and looking at a situation unfolding like a fly on the wall sort of thing. And looking at it in a very logical sense, A led to B led to C. And now, by actively trying to put yourself in each of these positions, you'll find that you'll gather far more information. And it's one thing to say it, but you really experience it when you try it. So what I'd like you to do now is to go back and think of a time, a particularly a time perhaps when you've 
had an argument or something that didn't go your way where there's two or more people involved. And think back to that time as to what point of view you were looking at when you were having this argument. And then try in your mind's eye to deliberately look at it first of all from your point of view, how you felt about it, what you believe they should or should not have done. And then once you've done this, look at it from as much as possible the other person's point of view. This time trying to really get into his or her world to really see it through not only his or her eyes but with their background, their feelings, what they think about the world, um, their emotional responses, that type of things. Without any kind of judgment, just try to see it from their point of view and gather as much information as possible. And then finally try and see it from an observer point of view. That is standing back and looking at things without emotion, without sort of judgments about how the argument could have unfolded in a different way if certain things could have happened. And notice that you get a lot more information. Now if you haven't done this already, just stop the video here and spend a bit of time thinking about a situation where you've been in an argument and try to see if you're able to gain more information about that argument which in hindsight would have perhaps led to you saying something differently or doing something differently at the time had you seen all that you see now from looking at these three positions. I think you'll find it very useful. This is definitely one of the most useful, quick and easy uh, exercises that we can do uh, in NLP. But before we finish, let's also uh, explore this a little bit further because you might notice that in life people often take one of these positions more commonly than another. For example, those people who live life looking through uh, the lens of their own self-perception have certain characteristics. For example, they're often a little bit more arrogant, they're more self-assured, um, they might be typically a, a sort of an autocratic leader type of person, someone who's, it's my way or the highway. Um, perhaps someone you might think might not be very good to be around, but also someone who makes sure that they look after number one and that his or her boundaries are respected. So keeps him or herself in good health, that sort of thing. So it does have some positive qualities as well. Second person, on the other hand, is comes across as a very caring person. So someone in a caring profession, like a counsellor, might be a typical second person uh, person. Second person person. That's a bit strange. And then they are always empathising with the people they're talking to. And as I say, they come across as caring, considerate, kind. But also they have some ne negative aspects in the, in the sense that sometimes they let people walk over them or they're more prone to burnout or they take on other people's energy very easily and feel deflated and washed out too often because they're not putting up their own boundaries like a first person would. So it's not necessarily good to always be in second person either. And then third person, which some people might say, oh, this is like the best position, is good in the sense that you can see it from a non-judgmental, non-emotional point of view. You can just see the logical unfolding of things and make more rational decisions. But like every, each of these positions, they themselves um, might miss out on, for example, the more important emotional aspects of this. A typical third person uh, I think of is someone like with Asperger's who finds it hard to get in touch with their emotions or empathize with anyone else but can see the logical reasoning. And so he or she is missing out on part of life and not getting the full picture by not allowing themselves to feel that emotional connection. So you can see that none of these three positions is necessarily the best but if you are a master communicator or NLP practitioners, you learn to operate 
quickly from all three positions to gather as much information as possible before you act or say something in any situation. And this makes you a far more powerful communicator than you ever were before you tried the three perceptual positions. So go ahead, do this as much as you can in the future. You'll find it very, very useful. And I look forward to hearing your stories of how you've been able to use these perceptual positions when I meet you in our Come and Try event.